Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a historical look video on Lautaro of the Mapuche. So in this video we're going to have a little bit of a historical look at um, behind him and his people. Then we'll move on to look at their unique abilities, unique building and unique unit. So you can expect me to pronounce things a little wrong at times. If you've watched these videos before you know how terrible I am at that. And if I do make any mistakes please do let me know in the comments. There's also bits I've left ha out here and there intentionally in the interest of keeping this video as short as possible. But obviously if there's something you want to mention that you believe I should have put indefinitely let me know down below. So please make sure you like the video and subscribe to see more of these historical look videos plus lots of gaming into and beyond rise and fall. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope it gives you an overview of who Lautaro and the Mapuche were and are. So the first question about the Mapuche is who are they? So they are a native people of South America, particularly predominant in modern day Chile with a much smaller group present in Argentina. Archaeological facts suggest that they were present in South America as early as the 5th century BC which is a long, long time ago. Um, the term Mapuche has been associated with a number of South American groups. To my understanding, the groups referred to as the Mapuche operate individually as smaller entities rather than, rather than as a single political unit. However, following the arrival of the Spanish in the 16th century and subsequent invasions, they united as one larger body in order to resist. Today, the Mapuche group is the largest native group in South America, with a population of around 1.7 million. 1.5 million of these live in Chile, and they make up around 8% of the population there. So who is Lautaro and what is his story? So Lautaro was born around 1533 as the son of a peacetime chief. In his short life, it was short because he died in his mid-20s um, in 1559, he, um, he became renowned for his leadership against the Spanish who were attempting to settle in Chile and push back the native Mapuche. Early in his life, it seems Lautaro was captured by the Spanish and was required to serve in the stables and eventually to take up the role of personal page for the Spaniard Pedro de Valdivia. Uh, you know, if that's wrong, I am sorry, but it's just not going to get any better than that. Um, during this time, he witnessed some of the horrific actions of the Spanish against his native counterparts, things that would encourage him down the route of resistance. Additionally, Lautaro used this period to study and learn the tactics of the Spanish army. More specifically, he, he basically learned to ride a horse, which was quite new and exciting back then in, in South America. So some claim Lautaro actually intentionally got captured in order to educate himself on the Spanish military tactics and plans. Anyway, whether he did or not, in 1552 Lautaro fled from his Spanish captives and within a year he would be leading the Mapuche resistance against them. In 1553, at age 19, Lautaro was appointed vice Turkey and soon began organising a large cohesive force to fight the Spanish. Additionally, Lautaro introduced horse units into the Mapuche army, as well as modern military formations and tactics. See? Riding a horse pays off when you learn to do it. Also, I'm 19, I'm, in fact I'm nearly 20, and I now feel a bit kind of useless, because at the age when, when he was organising an army, organising this big resistance, um, yeah, I'm stressing myself over, over whether I want an Italian or Chinese takeaway for my tea. So that's that's the difference. Anyway, um, yeah, back to the history. So, Lautaro's battles against the Spanish all took place as part of the Ariuco War. The first major military action Lautaro led against the Spanish was at the Battle of Tucapel. Tucapel was a Spanish fort with, which housed a garrison. The Spanish couldn't resist the Mapuche attack and were quickly routed. The rash, unorganised counter-attack um, was also defeated on Christmas Day 1553 with Lautaro's previous master, Pedro, because I, I'm just going to call him Pedro, you know, just because I don't want to savage the pronunciation of his surname. Um, he was captured and killed in the process, which is... How Christmassy, how festive. Um, so Lautaro desired to press home his military advantage following this. But the Mapuke victory tradition demanded a long period of celebration. This allowed the Spanish to reorganise and fortify, and it was not until February 1554 did he manage to put together a force to press forth the resistance.
The second of these key battles was the Battle of what I'm going to probably wrongly pronounce as Marienu. The battle was named after the hill on which Lautaro chose to deploy. Despite a shaky start, Lautaro intelligently encircled the Spanish forces and claimed victory. However, once more the victory celebrations prevented him from capitalising on this advantage and once more the Spanish fortified. During 1557, following other battles and sieges not discussed in this video, Lautaro desired to attack Santiago, the major Spanish city in Chile. On April 29th, the Spanish launched a surprise attack on Lautaro's camp, however, which wasn't too far away from Santiago. The Spanish army claimed a decisive battle at the, um, victory at the battle which followed, in addition to the life of Lautaro. He's actually said to have died pretty early in the battle. Um, but following the defeat, the Spanish displayed the head of Lautaro in the plaza of Santiago, which is a bit of bad taste, really. Um, however, Lautaro's legacy lived beyond his years. Lautaro is considered one of the great Chilean generals of all time, and his death inspired resistance for the following three centuries. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about the unique leader and unique uh, new civilization. Sorry, let's go on and talk a bit more about the bonuses of of both, um, a bit more civilization based. So Lautaro's unique leader ability is Swift Hawk, and this comes from um, something was also it was also known as Swift Hawk, hence the name of the unique ability. So this is in celebration that he found ways to probe and exploit weaknesses in the Spanish conquistador's cavalry. And in Rise and Fall this is demonstrated by the fact that defeating an enemy unit in their own territory decreases the loyalty of the enemy city. Or the closest enemy city obviously. So Turkey is also Mapuche's unique ability. Now, Turkey, or Axe Bearer, as it translates, was the title the Mapuche gave to their leaders in a time of war. Um, in Rise and Fall, this translates into all units trained in cities with an established governor, um, receive additional experience in combat, in addition to a combat bonus against other civilizations in a Golden Age. In my opinion, the additional experience in combat is a celebration of the Turkey's position. As previously mentioned, while Lautaro was the Turkey, he boosted the organization and strength of the army. Could this be part of the bonus? Could this part of the bonus be in relation to the governor perhaps acting as almost like a Turkey? Let me know in the comments what you think, but that's my, my best guess at it right now. So the second part of the bonus, um, the boost of combat strength against an enemy in a golden age, um, in my opinion is likely in celebration of the success of the Mapuche in resisting the largely um, favoured and more powerful Spanish Empire and, um, and really resisting their expansion quite well. So Mapuche's unique unit is the Malon Raider. The 16th century brought not just the Spanish invasion, but they also brought horses with, well, it, it did largely bring the Spanish invasion, but there was also horses. At first, the Mapuche were phased by the Spanish horses, but soon, in part due to Latouro's influence, the Mapuche were able to use the greatest strength of the Spanish against them. The Malam Raiders' name comes from their strikes on the Spanish invaders, which were swift raids to harass the enemy before leading the enemy counterattack into an ambush. As a result, in Civilization VI, the unit gets combat bonuses when fighting near friendly territory and pillaging costless movement movement points. So their unique structure as well is the Chemimal. So Chemimals were erected as great wooden tombstones the Mapuche carved for their dead. They're actually quite freaky, but I, I, that's probably just me. Um, they were carved from a single log of wood in either the shape of a male or female with their arms crossed over their bodies. In Rise and Fall, the Chemimal provides culture equivalent to 75% of, of the tiles appeal, and later in the game, the Chemimal also provides tourism. Chemimals were very cultural objects, which draw tourism today. So I hope this video has given you a great insight into the Mapuche and their history. Lautaro certainly was a remarkable man who achieved so much in his short life. 
Join me next week for another historical first look video. I hear that the last civilization may be the Zulus, which would be quite interesting. And also for more entertaining gaming and history videos um, beyond um, the, the new civilizations. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. Also, please hit that like button if you have enjoyed. It really helps us out. In addition to that, make sure you leave all your feedback, thoughts. I'll always get back to you in the comment section. And it's really great to hear what, what everybody thinks of the videos. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in a video in the not too distant future.